And there it is. And we are live. Good morning, Crypto Warriors, and welcome back to the Gentleman of Crypto episode 340. Today is Friday, February 8th, and I'm King. And I'm Bitcoin Z. And we're here to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community Monday through Friday at 10 -ish. At 10 -ish. And today, as you can see, we have a very special guest coming in at you. Uh, today we have Bill Ottman. He is the founder of Minds.com. He founded in 2011 with the goal of bringing a free open source and sustainable social network to the world he co-founded multiple viral media organizations holds a fellowship at boston global forum and serves on the advisory board of code to inspire he's a non uh, excuse me a non-profit building coding schools for women in afghanistan and he graduated from the university of vermont with a ba in english and i'm assuming bill uh you know welcome to the show and i'm assuming since you've been in uh you've created this since 2011 you've been in cryptocurrency for a while Yes. Yeah. I, I think I first got into Bitcoin in like 2012. Oh, okay. So triple OG over oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you maintain, you know, I couldn't find your exact name on, on Twitter. So do you maintain a presence under uh, another name that no one would know? No, no, I'm not on Twitter. Mine's at mine's on Twitter, but no, I dropped off all the mainstream social media proprietary software. I'm 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 trying to purge all closed source tech from my life. So like just made the announcement getting off LinkedIn. That's my last one. But Facebook I'm gone, Twitter I'm gone. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to stay clean. Nice. Well, hey, we already like you. You practice what you preach to the fullest. <laughs> um so if you're listening to us right now or watching us live, go ahead and check out minds.com. Again, it's M I N D S dot com. Uh, not only some of the technological trends we'll be talking about today when it comes to social media and blockchain, but of course we're going to be asking Bill about his site that he uh, co-founded and why it's important just from us poking around on it uh, and just from seeing some of the articles. I mean, it looks like you, you know, Wired had mentioned Minds.com, had an interview with you. I mean, we saw a few different interviews the last few years with you and everyone is saying this is the decentralized version of Facebook or will be the decentralized version of Facebook. Is that a fair way to explain it? We're working towards that. So, you know, everything we do is fully open source. You go to gitlab.com slash minds. We do all of our development on the open. Anyone can take our code. You can start your own social network with it. You can white label it. We can interconnect those networks. And so it's decentralized in that sense that anyone can take the stack and make their own. And then those can federate. So then, but then there's the more fully decentralized model, which is what we're really working on where it's going to leverage the DAT protocol, D-A-T, which is similar to IPFS. So, and the Nomad repository on there actually is, is our fully decentralized prototype where DAT is like a peer-to-peer -to -peer torrent style architecture where, you know, it's not blockchain, but it's still decentralized. And we're going to use the Ethereum addresses that are associated with your Minds account, your wallet on Minds, to sort of act as your verified username in the DAT ecosystem. And from that perspective, you know, there are no servers. There's no central servers. In the federation model, which plays like Mastodon, Diaspora, some other quote unquote decentralized social networks use, you, you have these centralized pods, but lots of them, which is cool. It's better than like one massive silo like Facebook or Twitter, but it's still subject to the types of censorship that you would see on Facebook and Twitter just in smaller pods. All right. So and those who are watching again on YouTube, uh, we actually pulled up the GitHub. So if, again, if you're not familiar with GitHub, it's owned by Microsoft. GitLab. GitLab. Oh, excuse me, GitLab. It is. I'm, I'm going to GitLab. I said GitHub. So you're saying that. No, uh -huh. yeah, no. Well, no, no, no. You're right. You're right to mistake them. We actually moved off GitHub, which is moved, okay. so owned by Microsoft. It. Right, and that's, and that's where I was just about to go with it too. I was about to say it's interesting you did that, but all right, great catch. Uh, they're under okay. GitLab, uh, as uh, Bill said. They weren't a GitHub until Microsoft bought it with last year, I believe it was sometime. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you cover that story. You know what? Yeah, we covered that story, and uh, already kudos to you for moving off because that was a part of the story we covered. We were interested in seeing what were going to happen to some of the businesses and developers that are under GitHub. And of course, where they readily spot that, hey, it's time to exit left. Yeah, man, GitLab is an amazing project. If anyone out there who's running a running a tech project, use GitLab. It's, it's incredible. It's all open source. You can host it yourself if you want. 
They also have project management tools and like boards similar to like Asana, which a lot of people use for project management. And so we also got to ditch Asana uh, in the, you know, simultaneously to ditching GitHub. So it's like, we're in this process of trying even as a company to, you know, get all the proprietary stuff out of our, out of our stack. It's not easy because, you know, open source stuff is, is generally a little bit further behind the, you know, like Google Hangouts, for example. Right, for sure. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of bugs and kinks work out. So uh, when it comes to open source, uh, I mean, let's just jump right into it. One of the criticisms of not only your site, but sites like it that are, you know, truly or working their way to uh, be truly decentralized open source is the filtering, the content restriction. As mm -hmm. much as people uh, dislike, you know, the shadow bans, whether you're working with YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or some of the rules and restrictions they put on people or, you know, uh, blocking people. Uh, the thing that they actually do do is also keep away what some people perceive as you know bad material harmful material like you know overtly gory stuff uh you know criminal stuff whether it's drugs child porn all that stuff pineapples right. on pizza pineapples on pizza hilarious yeah. <laughs> uh but when it comes to sites like yours there isn't really a true uh i mean anybody can post anything right or wrong no no, no they, they, well it has to be legal i mean we are a site and we have servers so you know we have we certain components of minds.com are decentralized like the peer to peer payments is is on ethereum you know we use web torrent for some peer to peer video hosting like i mentioned we're working on dat and integrating that but you know otherwise <laughs> look no no doxing no child porn no anything that is illegal and we have a report tool and we have filtering tools so you know our content policy is way more open than like Facebook or Instagram, where literally I, I just read an article last week of Facebook banned an image of an ancient statue just because there had a nipple on the statue. So it's <laughs> like, yo, what are we going to ban like history? Yeah, you know, right. where do you draw the line? And so look, we're not, guess what? We're not going to ban that. We're not going to, uh, as long as it's legal, we put it behind an explicit flag if it's you know for above 18 mm -hmm. and we're trying to do our best to not be making these uh inconsistent subjective decisions about oh you know that violence is going to get banned but you know this terrorist isn't going to get banned it's and it, there's so much inconsistency inconsistency on youtube facebook twitter that it's just not it's not cool so we're trying to do something differently but still somewhat moderated all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen some people on Facebook get banned because they were doing holistic health and they were saying that it was a misrepresentation of the uh, pharmaceutical company. So right. I've seen people exactly. get banned just for information, just for good information. So, so real quick, I want to say uh, hello to some of our viewers. Actually, we got a couple people. Looks like they're already using minds.com. So that's pretty cool. We can get their insight and their questions. But what's going on, Antonio, Madam Crypto, Shannon Allen, Cornelius, Jizzy, GODTB, Kevin Hodges, Tony Nolly, Ronald Stewart. Hey, welcome. You said just getting turned on to our channel. Welcome, Tessa man. Hall, of course. And again, this is Bill Ottman with Minds.com CEO. You can Google Minds.com right now. Mm -hmm. They're working to become a truly decentralized platform for social media. Uh, they're already ahead of the curve with a lot of people. Uh, what's going on, Donald Muhammad? Yes, everyone, everyone. Um, so a question actually comes from one of our viewers now. Donald said, how is he prepared for attacks and opposition from bigger companies? This is bigger than social media and steps on the government control twitter uh etc am i correct i actually agree with that so um how yeah how are you prepared to deal with those attacks so let's we're say already you, getting those attacks i mean I was say, facebook, honestly from reading the articles about you guys you are already getting those attacks yeah. as well we're, we facebook was blocking our i think they i'm not sure i think they still are yep uh, somebody's saying in the comments right now facebook won't let me post minds.com they say it's an unsecured link i hate this. yeah and <laughs> It's in, I sent them a letter. I'm trying to understand. There's no way to even communicate with Facebook why this is happening. And I'm pretty sure Facebook got hacked for like 50 million users like a month ago. Yep. You know, we, yep. We've never been hacked. We don't even take personal information. Facebook requires personal information. You know, we don't spy on people. It, it, so for them to, it's, there's great irony in them calling us unsecure. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so give us the genesis of this. Uh, you wake up one day, you're using all these social media uh, sites, like you said, the LinkedIn and the Facebooks, you aren't happy. Uh, what made you, you know, how did you uh, build this creation? What made you decide to do it? And, you know, where are you now and where do you look to go with it? 
I think I always knew there was going to be an open source alternative because if you look at like what happened to Wikipedia, it sort of rose up to the top out of nowhere. It's fully open source, community driven. And, you know, I remember back in the day, like Encarta, you know, you boot up this stuff with a CD on your computer, encyclopedias and, and shit. And it was just like, you know, ridiculous. And it, it, Wikipedia, a, a crowdsourced repository of knowledge is winning somehow. You know, it's not the best source of information for everything, but it's an incredible tool. And look at what's happening with Bitcoin, open source money, op decentralized open source peer to peer money. So it's going to happen with social networks too. So we always saw that coming. And then we actually had millions of followers on Facebook on a bunch of different pages. And we saw the algorithm start to restrict our content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're only reaching 5% of your own followers on Facebook now. Yeah, yeah we're, going through it. we're going through it everywhere. Oh yeah. You feel, you feel the burn They're They're, they're trying to bleed everyone out and they want you to pay. So we were just like, look, we're, we're done. We're not going to, trust Facebook for the future of our business. And you look at all the layoffs that are happening, uh, Vice, BuzzFeed, all these media companies are, are, are you know downsizing. It's because their reach is gone. And Facebook brought everybody in saying, oh, you can reach your friends. Uh, no, you can't reach your friends anymore. Uh, oh, yeah. Just joking. You can reach the friends that we place in front of you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, going along with that, um, how do you feel, I guess, with the uh, Patreon, Gab, and, uh, and other social media sites, uh, with the media censorship that they have shown, do you think that those people will move over to your site uh, in the future, or, or is there something that may block them from doing that? I mean, we built a sort of crypto Patreon-like tool. So on Mines, you earn tokens for your contributions every day. Like when people upvote you or comment on you, you're earning tokens. And then you can use those to boost your posts. One token will give you a thousand impressions on whatever post you boost. You can also send the tokens peer-to-peer -to, -peer to other users as like a tip or on a recurring monthly basis mm -hmm. in exchange for exclusive content. So- right. um, And one token is what, 15 cent? Uh, yeah, approximate yeah, yeah. point yeah. six uh, Ethereum, something like that. Yes, yeah. If you go to minds.com slash token, you can see all the info about how to use it and you know how to buy them, and you can also earn it. And so that's an ERC twenty token. We have sort of a hybrid on chain, off chain solutions to deal with some of the scalability issues on Ethereum and to make it a little bit easier for people to figure it out, as opposed to having to set up MetaMask and you know your you know, all your on-chain stuff right away. But, you know, I think that Patreon, look, they're under the control of Stripe and the payment networks, and it's a totally proprietary platform. You know, they tapped into a, an interesting uh, product, which is important. It's an important model, but they're, the whole infrastructure is, is sort of rotten, unfortunately, because they're not in control of their own destiny. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's why we see more crypto type Patreons popping up. And yeah, that, that's just where we see things going. We don't want to be reliant on anyone other than ourselves for our future. So with Absolutely. with that, uh, can you accept crypto donations from multiple cryptocurrencies? Shannon Allen, our uh, comment section is asking. That is, we're definitely going to be working on that in the next quarter um, so that people, so especially for peer to peer, so you can accept whatever crypto you want for the recurring payments. That's really important. So, you know, I guess my thing is, it's kind of going back to, you know, uh, especially when it comes to government and everybody uh, trying to control some of these companies on the rise, companies like yours. Uh, how do you defend against the critics or, you know, what would be the thing you would do if the government does say, hey, you need to start playing by these rules? Or what's to say to stop you guys from just literally trying to pump your own token uh, and then add in restrictions later on? Like, how do we know the traje trajectory of your project is actually going to go as planned uh, versus, you know, we've seen a lot of scams in this industry where people start off one way and then uh, in the ninth inning, they're like, well, no, we're actually going to do it this way and just go for your money. No, that's a, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, of course, we're trying to make our own token used. And, and the reason- I appreciate you saying that, Bill. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, look, I mean, we're, we're trying to create like a micro economy on our site. And the thing is, we can't use another token. People ask, well, why do you have to launch your own token? Why don't you just use Bitcoin or, or something? And I want to integrate Bitcoin. Um, but because we have this reward system where, you know, every day we're 
we used to have a point system before we moved to Ethereum. So we would just reward people points for their contributions and their engagement every day. And we were just creating those because they was on our own servers and it was like, you know, a non-blockchain digital currency. People would, they loved it. They were using the points, getting more views on their content. And we were like, well, you know, this would be even better if it was, if it was crypto and it was more of like a transparent supply and people could, you know, actually control their tokens on the, in their own wallet. So that's why we moved. And so the reason we don't use another token is because w- then we would literally have to be giving away like millions of dollars. The cool thing about having our own token is, yeah, we were able to create an initial supply. We can basically airdrop it to our community every day. And, we, you know, we're not really, especially because of gamification, spammers, you know, people are trying to scam our system. Oh, for sure. So, okay. so if we were just giving away Bitcoin for all the rewards every day, that would literally be just giving away money to, you know, people that we can't necessarily verify it's a lot more reasonable no, I got you. yeah, yeah. Uh, you can give it away and that doesn't necessarily mean they're using your platform in a sense yeah right so okay. i would like to you know we're, we're having conversations about potentially doing some uh campaigns of like covering people's gas costs uh and actually just fronting the ethereum just to make it easier maybe maybe for like a you know a month we would try that and see what happened so that in that case we would actually be giving away like you know money um but you know, it, it, there's um, there, there's a lot of arguments in both directions. We're not you know maximalists, but I love Bitcoin. I love a lot of different tokens. There's tons of scams out there. We're just trying to be as transparent as possible with our process, and at the same time, build a fully decentralized network that is not even subject to us. So DAT, for instance, you can't take down anything in the DAT ecosystem. So it's not even like we would be able to change anything in terms of like the governance of our token and, you know, changes like we have a community and we're trying to understand community consensus as much as possible as we make decisions. You know, look, I'm not going to say we're as decentralized as Bitcoin. We're, we're, we're not. Um, but we're still a really f- useful tool and token for people to get exposure on their content so you know it's sort of like a different tool for a different thing no and, and we appreciate you being upfront with that again uh we've had people mm-hmm. tell us that they're fully decentralized and of course you do some digging around for five minutes you're like well that's not true mm-hmm. uh but as you said i mean is that's that's not really there for anyone at this point so for you to be a hybrid and at least work toward it uh that's definitely a positive uh, when it Different. comes when it comes to the token uh, economics in general, uh, and for those who are wondering too, you can see their white paper. Uh, as Bill said, minds.com slash token. Uh, at the top of that page, uh, you can click on the or excuse me, about the middle of the page, you can click on white paper, PDF, token one on one spec. So uh, we looked at the white paper, and and just in regards to the token economy, uh, how much does your team decide to keep? How are you giving away? Can you give us just a brief summary on that so our viewers know uh, what to expect with the tokens? Our team took none. And we did that for a variety of reasons. One, I mean, you see all these projects where like the founders take like 30%. So one, that's sketchy just from an obvious point of view for centralization of, of control of the supply. But also we did it because, you know, we're really, you know, we believe it's a, a utility and not a security. And when you're giving big supplies of the initial supply to founders, you know, that's starting to make it look more like a security. Um, right. So, you know, we went through a whole list of like the Howey test and the Hinman test to really make sure that we had immediate usability. You know, I think we're literally one of the only tokens that on day one that we launched in August, you could already use the tokens on day one. Mo- most crypto projects are, you know, they don't launch the product for like years and it's not even really usable. I mean, yeah, you can you can use it on day one. And um, yeah, so that that was a, a very deep process that we we thought about to make sure that it was as fair as possible nice oh, yeah. and i like the fact as a utility token you, like you said it has a use case because we always say you know we love bitcoin but there are tokens such as uh brave which we work with brave browser binance token where they yeah. actually have a use case and uh long term bitcoin won't be the only cryptocurrency so as far as utility it's great to see in social media especially you know 
everybody uses social media and most people want to move away from censorship they just don't know it yet they you know most people think it's fine you know it, it can keep going the way it's going but once the censorship really kicks in for some people i think you'll see a mass exodus and mine's looks like a, a good top choice so the, the uh now is this a family business i see a lot of opmans in the uh yeah yeah i know und undeniably so uh my uh my dad and my brother are are involved and it's it's been great doing that because to be honest startups are tough man and you know making it through the hard times we like i said we originally launched in 2011. we didn't really launch the 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 point system and uh, the app until 2015. so we were just building out the products for the for that period of time but it's hard and you know if it hadn't been family i think there's some hard times that i'm not sure we would have made it through if, if if we didn't have that family element and you know at the same time so some people would look at optics family business oh wait a second that's centralized but actually in 2017 we did a equity crowdfunding round where 1500 members of the community helped us raise a million bucks and now those 1500 members of the community actually have stock in mines Oh, wow. Nice. So it's not just like a, you know, small group of people involved and, uh, you know, they're all shareholders. So we, we want this to be community owned in the sense of the, the equity. We want everyone to, uh, have a say in the code and help build the code together. So, you know, we're trying to walk the walk as much as we can that, you know, fully decentralized is, um, is like a, it's almost like a singularity it's it's sort of like this utopia that you know even bitcoin obviously it's probably the most decentralized one of the most decentralized things out there but you know there's still centralization issues in bitcoin with the miners and right, yep. so but but look creating a perfect system is uh is not easy yeah, <laughs> no it's take time i always tell people uh humans have to catch up to the process of decentralization we're not there yet. I don't think as a society, people still think somebody needs to control it. That's why we still have exchanges, uh, <laughs> the central yeah. exchanges. That's why and you still have centralized miners. They're like, well, somebody else can do it. Once people there's a myth lot, that like the decentralization dude, to take off. Centralization is not evil. Yeah. What we want is kind of a bend towards decentralization. But this whole idea that central, you know, central servers for certain functions. Are useful i mean like you know let's be realistic we're, we're on google hangout right now yeah you know i mean and we on minds actually just launched video conferencing in groups um which is uses jitsi which is an open source uh encrypted video conferencing framework very similar to google hangouts but you know it's not like a totally decentralized video conferencing like you need right. to run it on a server so it's okay for there to be balance between centralization and decentralization and i mean i totally agree with you it's just like you, you just all you have to do is be honest about it and you know have a goal and what else can you do so first of all that was a wonderful plug right there we'll make sure we check that out and for those who are listening and watching as well we're going to uh, do a full breakdown on mine so we'll have that review video coming as soon as possible uh but uh we have a few more things so first to kind of go back toward the government thing a few people are saying that they didn't get a clear answer they want to know what you know when you get that tap on the shoulders when you get big you're gonna get that tap on the shoulder you know it's sure you might already got it who knows but uh when it happens where the government is you know same thing they're doing to mark zuckenberg hey we want to know how your business is operating the same subpoenas they gave to Kraken and some of these other exchanges last year uh when they really come for you and they want customer data or they want to know how you're operating yeah. and they want you to start opening up back doors so they can start monitoring and seeing things what like how how are you going to uh, fight against that Totally. So uh, the main thing is that I, we don't even want your personal information and you don't have to give that to us to use the site, anything. So that's number one. Number two, I'm not going to lie. If the government gives us a court order to hand over what we have, yeah, <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? But, th but the difference is that we want as little information from you as possible. So, I, you know, that's the best that we can do. And then moving into the more DAT decentralized ecosystem where we can't even, you know, hand it over, we have nothing to even give, you know, that's the goal. So we're trying to balance anonymity, 
giving people that right, not requiring the personal information, and then, but also being realistic, we're a US company, we're subject right. to US law, we can't just say no, otherwise the whole network is gonna go down. So, you know, how do you balance those two things? Right, no, that's okay. fair. Uh, well, we'll definitely be looking at you to figure out uh, what, what moves you make next. If someone said first one through the door, you know how it goes. Oh, yeah. uh, so hopefully you guys can size at that. Uh, speaking of first one through the door, uh, I would say just looking at a competitor, and I may be wrong, but a competitor looks like it's Steam almost. So what are you guys doing differently than Steam, whereas they're not necessarily a competitor, or you know, or your platform is a better one to use than them? I mean, generally speaking, I think it's a cool experiment that they have going. Um, they're more of just a blogging tool. We have more of like full social networking features. Um, oh, you have podcasts on there. I mean, we just clicked on one. It had the podcast. You got the videos going and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, the the main difference, though, with how the reward system works is that on Steam, the more Steam you have, the more voting power you have, which creates this sort of whale network yeah. where you're trying to get attention of like a limited number of big users and get them to vote on your stuff so that you earn. On Minds, everybody's vote is the same. So the more you earn more tokens based on the raw popularity, unique popularity of your posts, which I think is a little bit more fair. And we we do want to integrate sort of a, a witness node element so that people can be running when they run a mines node, they can be earning potentially. I think that's a cool thing about Steam and they're running their own blockchain. And you know, but the other thing is that you know, we're not running our own blockchain. We're, you know leveraging ethereum but you know steam is running into scalability issues because of the fact that they're you know doing their own chain and putting everything on a blockchain is really i don't <laughs> think that it's going to be scalable to run you know hundreds of millions of users at a time i think that we need to understand what's the most intelligent things to be putting on chain it's a hybrid model and so while they do probably have one of the most transacted chains because delegated proof of stake, um, it's still just, you know, they had to like close down signups, I think. I think that they were yeah. saying that they couldn't even uh, grow. So, you know, that's an issue as well. But generally speaking, you know, I, I'm, I'm a supporter of open source crypto projects. If you're if you're doing that, look, you're, you're pretty cool in my book. It's more the proprietary stuff where I say, look, you're, you're t you're using all these open source tools to build your stuff, oh, but then you're so true. Uh, Google Chrome, we're looking at you. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at you. But Chromium, on the other hand, yeah, which Google. Is, you know, so, I'm just trying to get more awareness out about that distinction. I think most people don't know enough. It's not their fault, but just to just look and dig in and say, can I? Are, are these people giving me their code? Are are they giving me the same rights that? you know, they were granted by leveraging all the tools that they use to build their product. It's it's sort of like a mutual respect kind of thing. I was going to say, you know what? It's like slow clap on that statement right there. Uh, I appreciate that, that you're not looking at all these projects as competitors, but as, hey, it's another open source project attempting to be decentralized. I like it yeah. um, because that is what more of the community needs. Um, I mean, we've already seen, and this, I guess this will kind of shift the conversation over because we're getting some of the questions about some of the news stories as well. Uh, the kind of shift when we start talking about trends, we start talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole, uh, you know, that's where we're seeing one of the biggest splits. You got places like Gemini and Coinbase that started off for the community that are literally now like, nope, uh, <laughs> we're trying to be the only one and you know, trying to be the only exchange. We're trying to be the only this, the only that. We don't want the competition. So uh, when it comes to competition, I guess the, uh, some of these technological trends, uh, whether it's blockchain or cryptocurrency in general, Oh, uh, and especially when it comes to the open dialogue part of it, where do you see us going? And, you know, what's the timeline on that? Yeah, I think that the platforms that embrace collaboration are, are going to win. Um, I don't think that proprietary platforms are, are sustainable models. I, I think that, you know, in the short term, they can act like they have a competitive edge because they're being all secretive and whatnot. But look, that's what Facebook's doing. And, and Facebook, even though, yeah, they're still huge and uh, they're still sort of dominating along with Google, in the long term, it's not going to work. So, um, you know, ultimately, people want to support the projects that have their best interests at heart. And so it's going to take a, it's going to take a while, 
but we're, yeah, we're gonna I, get there. I can tell you right now, the young younger people under 25 group, nobody uses Facebook at, at all, really. And when they use social media, if they can get paid from it in rewards, I can guarantee you that's what really will make this this project as well as others take off. Because I just think they don't know about it yet. I mean, once they can see, I can get rewards from posting content. I do this anyway. Let me just start my own channel. That's the here. thing, man. Everyone cares about likes. They want they and they want to earn. You know, yeah, anything sure. that can give you a little something for your time, like obviously that would be successful. But the thing, you know, yeah, no one's on Facebook, but everyone's still on Instagram and WhatsApp. I was just about to say, Instagram, yeah. so, so that'll take a little longer. But. And, and WhatsApp is about to launch some sort of yeah, weird stuff. Right. And, yes. and, and, and that's how Facebook is going to stay in business by trying to keep buying up the Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you, you might not know it, but you're here. Uh, yeah. So uh, another question or another question statement we got, you know, top news story today, Bitcoin ETFs might be coming. Uh, first, uh, I'm assuming you do, but do you hold cryptocurrency? Are you a trader? Do you buy it? Do you, or are you just a long term holder? What's your situation when it comes to crypto and Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mess around. I have I have Bitcoin. I have that makes me feel good, people. <laughs> I've got I've got a handful. You know, the the altcoins that I support, it sort of goes along with what, what we were saying before. Look, if you're if you're open source, if you have a product already, I don't I'm not I'm not buying coins that like I'm waiting on something typically. Right. I, I but yeah, definitely Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, and mines tokens. And I, I'm definitely just supportive of experimentation. I'm also not a snob. You know, I think that there's there's good, you know, there's there's two ends of, of sort of the maximalist issue. Like I support principles. And like people should should stick to that, but at the same time, like the the market, the greater market, we all need to help propel at the same time. So, you know, being a big snob with regard, it's it's sort of like self defeating because when you're talking a lot of smack about the the ecosystem in general, it's sort of hurt it's hurting the momentum but at the same time you know you should stick to your principles and but i think there's a way to balance both so thoughts on bitcoin etfs do we need it is it coming uh you know what's what's your thoughts when it comes to bitcoin etfs you know i guess they are you with cz yeah you would see a <laughs> sec commissioner i guess was overheard saying that you know eventually it's going to get approved hopefully this year uh, but regardless, what are your thoughts on the Bitcoin? Of course, ETF? we need it. We in every direction we need more, reg, we, you know, m more approvals on the regulate regulatory side. But we also, you know, the most important thing. I forget who I saw tweet about this. Might have been Pomp uh, about we need products, we need use cases, we need ways to, you know, places that accept Bitcoin and crypto, and you know, we need everyone who is building projects to just deliver. That's what's going to ultimately bring it to the masses is the use case. You know, the speculation, more speculation, okay, fine, that's going to bring a lot of institutional money into the into the uh, market, but at, at the end of the day, I think we need people using it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think social media is a great use case, honestly, because if you want to stay anonymous on social media, best way to transact is with crypto. And if you don't keep that information, you don't have to worry about handing it over later. Uh, like some of these other, other places had to stop altogether just because uh, censorship. So good to see there. So you're a CEO in the, in the space. Uh, what do you think about self-regulation versus regular regulation in general? Um, I mean, we are all for self-regulation over here. Uh, we feel like the government, you know, they've, they've had their chance with the regular banking system and we've seen what happens. I think more or less people are now saying, uh, you know, you talk about the Gemini twins, some of them, not only for their own personal businesses and, and protection against competition, but I think people are just honestly just scared to go against the grain with it and saying, well, we don't need them here. Uh, but I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah. I mean, I am much more of a supporter of, you know, the SEC is important to a degree, but at the same time, what, like the equity crowdfunding round that we did under the Jobs Act. So the SEC approved this this act that allowed companies like us to raise money for equity from non-accredited investors. That's the beauty of Reg C crowdfunding. Before you had to, you, you a startup could only raise money from people with like over $2 million of net worth or whatever right. it is that accounts for an accredited investor. So that move was huge. They need to think of crypto in a similar way. Like 
I'm much more a fan of giving people the benefit of the doubt that like, look, you need to inform yourself about what to invest in. And, you know, coming down on all these companies, I, you know, look, look, look what's happening to kick and Ken. Right. Um, I mean, bring that up. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not, I, I don't know all the specifics, but I tend to think that if there's good faith and the project is going to deliver a product, like let people put their money where they want to put their money. Generally speaking, I, I think that that is going to allow for more innovation to occur. And we, we need that. Well, my thing is, is it's kind of like, so you started in 2011, if you had an ICO in 2011, get the money going and launch a company. Uh, and then all of a sudden in 2017, once Bitcoin reached its top, they said, well, hold on, you, you did an ICO, you made money. We want to, you know, for us, it's just one of those things where we already had a system that was working with ICOs. It was unregulated, uh, but it worked. I mean, were some people scammed? Yes. But even with regulations, people get scammed. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. we, look, we look at some of these banks making away with all types of fines. So yeah. I don't know, uh, but it was, it's, it's, it's interesting to get your thought because we know at the end of the day, you know, once you have these big social media companies or exchanges, wherever, you know, you're definitely at the table and you have a vote as to, hey, do we go toward more self-regulation or uh, do we use the regulators, pay them off and make sure the competition doesn't enter the game with a uh, $50,000 license and a $30,000 yeah. lawyer on the side, you know? I mean, I think that crypto projects that are launching tokens need to be cognizant of the differences between utilities and securities. And like, we, look, in order to to gain mainstream adoption, we have to be able to play by the rules. And at the same time, I think that the SEC should, you know, be evolved and understand we need to be ahead of this game in the US in order to be competitive globally. Hopefully, so, you know, for us, we were very, very uh, diligent in trying to make sure that we weren't treating it as a security. It's, it's, it's not. It's our whole revenue model. Basically, we didn't do an ICO. We sell tokens, but that's forever. We're always going to be selling them. And then basically it's like a gift card. So people buy the tokens. We count that as, as um, deferred revenue in our operating plan. And then when people redeem the tokens, whether it's to promote their stuff or uh, you know access premium stuff or launch a node or whatever, that's when we recognize the revenue. So our, we transformed our whole company to be token fueled we, we didn't like certain companies are treating the ico as a security and that's okay and i think there should be more freedom for companies to do that at the same time so like i mean we're considering doing a security token in the future um and that would be a totally different token well our, our thing though even uh with the token whether you call it security or whatever i mean the howie test was at 85 years old i mean is I don't well, now know. they're talking about the Hinman test. So the, 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 the I, I don't know what his position in the SEC is, but he came out with guidance about crypto tokens uh, specifically in the last year and gave all these variables like what's the distribution? Do you have a product? Um, you know, did you give to founders? All of these types of variables that make it feel like one or the other. And like, for instance, we have a, a parcel limit. You can't buy more than uh, like 30K worth right now. So that keeps it so that it can't be looking like a, a big investment. Right. So there's all of these different things that you go through. You and agree with these things is what you're saying, right? It's I agree with playing by the rules. I mean, we have to. We have no other choice. So we're doing, and I think that as long as companies are doing their best to play by the rules and you know have a good legal team that's thinking about these things carefully, look, that's as much as we can do. I, I generally think that um, as long as it's in good faith, that that that's the big thing. Yeah. Well, if you have a law, lawyer, law team, you already know, uh, or a legal team, excuse me, you already know the government doesn't care about the the good faith rule. But um, right. <laughs> Well, Wills, I mean, I, I get you. And and again, this is kind of going back to the questions they asked about, uh, you know, how would you, what, what would you do if the government comes to knocking? Because our thing is, we hear a lot of companies and founders say, well, you got to play by the rules. But I mean, at the same time, we look at how the rules are being shaped and who's shaping them. I mean, since we started in business, it's literally like we always use it as a joke because it's serious. We've literally woken up Tuesday and Wednesday morning and saw new laws or regulations passed 
of stuff that we have been doing like the last two years unrestricted. All of a sudden it's like, well, you didn't have a chance to vote on this. Uh, you, know, you had no say, so this is what it is. And now right. you need to pay for this lawyer and you need to get this license in order to continue doing what you've been doing successfully. So for us, we are definitely anti a lot of it. We get it. Like, you know, you do have to play by the rules. We need better rules. But we need but better I also rules. Think that, like, look, you guys are ahead of the game. And so I don't think everyone who is like a pioneer deserves to be punished just because there was no rules when they got there. I mean, you know, that's also the SEC's fault. So, you know, I typically, generally speaking, I want, I want less government. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm don't, don't get me wrong, but I, 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 we don't have a choice. So, you know, I don't think it's fair for people to be punished who, who just happen to be like way ahead of the game. True. Uh, let's see. And the last couple, I saw someone else mention it. Um, Let's say, you know, you could you say you kind of do content filtering so to make sure it isn't crazy. How do you guys, you have an algorithm to track all of that? Let's say someone, because again, uh, when I did some of the deep dive, and this was uh, years ago, so it may have been earlier on before some of the tech was built up, but a few people were complaining, saying, hey, if you don't filter it the right way, you might see some stuff you don't really want to see on here because, you know, you're allowed to post many things. Uh, it's, yeah. So how do you kind of ensure that, someone isn't posting something illegal or something like that you know is there a way to monitor all of that we have a reporting tool we have admins who you know try to go through stuff and find it but you know you have half the people are complaining oh you know do, we don't want you filtering or censoring right. they're, they're, and, then and then you have the other half of people saying oh well That's no fair. i don't want to see stuff that i don't want to see like and so but both of those are true and so you need to figure out a way to appease both sides. And at the same time, for us, obviously, you know, free speech within the law is what we're dedicated to. And we're still, you know, a small team. There's only, you know, 10, 15 of us. Um, and we're trying to get the community more involved in the moderation so that it's, you know, to be honest, I don't ever want long term. We don't want to be in the position where it's like us making the decision. It should be more of a community system. Um, and you as a user should be in control of what you're seeing. So, you know, are a few things slipping through the cracks right now? Probably we're doing our best to make that not happen. And at the same time, pervert, preserve people's free speech. So to me, I would rather be on a site that is focused on free expression primarily, as opposed to censorship primarily, because I think that long-term that's what the world needs. Censorship actually makes the problems worse. Even if you, you know, obviously there's messed up hate speech, there's racism, there's, you know, terrorism, there's violence, there's all these horrible things on the internet. But when you censor that stuff, it doesn't make it go away. It's like, it's like pushing something under the rug that we need to confront as a society and let the conversation occur as long as it's legal. Like, um, you know, I talk about, have you guys heard of Daryl Davis? That heard sounds of. familiar. He befriended, I'm curious what you guys think of this. Um, he befriended, uh, so uh, African-American guy, befriended hey, hundreds, hundreds of members. What was that? The KKK guy? Yes. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. About, yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, so, yeah, for those who don't know, I, pardon me, I didn't mean to cut you off. Daryl Davis is a black guy. Uh, and I, I remember seeing it, uh, he did like a, might be a YouTube documentary on it as well, but uh, he goes around befriending KKK members to show everybody, hey, that you can love and peace and all that good stuff. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, oh, you're talking about Uncle Ruckus. Oh. By the way, they all left. No, he, he, they, yeah. they, he, not only did he just befriend them to say, oh, we get along. Yeah, they left the KKK. 100 of them left. Right. No, um, I think it's a positive thing. Um, rather, I'm kind of in the same boat. I won't go out my way to befriend all these different types of people, but sure, I think yeah. regardless yeah. of the circumstance, everyone actually could get along. If they, if you're in a burning building together and you would need each other to get out alive, everyone would get along. It's one of those <laughs> things, you know? Or if it's one of those things where if you have a child in that same burning building uh, and the guy you hate the most goes back in there and, and is physically able to bring your child out alive, you're going to love that person. I don't care you know, what you think about, you know, sexuality, religion, color, all that. So I agree with what he's doing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, we're trying to apply that on like, that's a microcosm, but 
in a macro sense, when you look at all the platforms, like what happens when all this content gets pushed off Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, it's just, it's whack-a-mole. It's coming up in other places and the internet itself is becoming more radicalized and inflammatory. So, you know, we need to just have a new perspective on this if, if we actually want to solve it. And the data seems to show that if you let the conversation happen, then, you know, let the mobs sort of communicate. And ultimately, obviously, like those, it's, it's prehistoric, all of these ridiculous right. ideas and, you know, whether it's terrorism or whatever. So we need to balance it. It's that I, I don't know if I'm a broken record saying that. No, no. And, and I, it's good. I will say to be fair, you know, I'll talk about some of the negative critiques. I've also seen uh, people respond to those people. Again, I'll check out different forums, different articles, uh, looking up some of the research. And people also were responding like, hey, you set the filters up appropriately. You won't see uh, any, like a fraction of what you're talking about. Specifically, they were like, uh, one person was like, just don't put any political, uh, they was like, don't subscribe to any political news, you'll be fine. Because <laughs> uh, like you said, the political news definitely gets inflammatory on the internet. Uh, but people were saying, if you, if you set up your, uh, your content filtering the right way on your page and everything, you can see the information that's good. So, uh, and even scrolling through the home page, which we just did, I mean, of course you see a lot of mainstream type of articles. So oh, yeah, I already found a few channels, some stand up comedy, Joe Rogan channels. There we go. So yeah, great to, great places where you can uh, look for what you want to look for. I mean, as, as an adult, I don't really have sympathy for other adults who see things they don't want to see on social media. Just block it or go to something else. And with this, you can absolutely control your feed. So I like that. Yeah. And, and to be fair, we, we also, we've gotten it as well. We're, uh, you know, people come on a channel, just, you know, complain or thumbs down or something. It's like, you know, you don't have like this is YouTube, man. It's like a million channels out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to. Yeah. Like, don't, don't waste your time with us there. <laughs> but and um, if you look at how bad things are on Twitter and YouTube for you know all of the trolling and whatnot, like clearly what they're doing isn't working because right, it's, it's it's a horrible situation. Everyone is upset about everything. So, you know, maybe another approach makes sense. And um, I don't know why none of the big networks really have this philosophy. I mean, because it's just, it's difficult with advertisers, you know, when, once you have a lot of more uh, explicit content, you know, it, be, it becomes interesting. But, you know, at the same time, as we all know, explicit sites are actually some of the most popular on the internet. So this is the weird thing. That simultaneously, while people are like, "Oh, I don't know, want to, I don't want to see that," you know, ten yeah. minutes later they're going to an explicit site to check some stuff out. So, <laughs> yeah, how do you know what was on that video? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Bill, uh, thanks for having. Do you have any more questions you want to ask? Uh, no more questions for me. Uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you uh, got to get into how it, it was built and different protocols and everything. Sounds good. Definitely uh, gonna post some content today. Yeah, um, as we said, we're definitely going to get on the site, folks. We'll do a review on it as well yep. uh, and check it out because, again, if it's another platform a bit more decentralized than some of the ones we're using, um, you know, CryptoQ, one of our in-house moderators, he said as we were talking throughout the show, he was trying to post uh, this show on a Facebook and they're literally not letting him do it. He said it a couple times he's tried uh, now, so you are definitely getting shadow. It's not even a shadow ban for you, Bill. This is a real yeah. ban. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope we don't get none of this sauce spilled on us for messing with you, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, what would you like to leave us with here? I mean, for me, man, it's all about just using tools that reflect your values. So, like you guys say, you use Brave for like right on, man. I mean, it's a it's a privacy protecting browser. Like, just don't use don't use tools that are gonna are going to extract value from you and you know on all layers and so from bitcoin to the apps to the os to you know what you what you buy in life just like where you put your money is what changes things that's what the the only way we're going to change the world it's not going to be on like you know these these uh singular issues it's like it's a day-to-day -day thing everywhere we put our resources so yeah, man, I'd, uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, hit you up on mines and, you know, I uh, I wouldn't worry about the Facebook thing. I, are they really not even, are they used to be allowing it from a CAPTCHA. All you had to do is fill out a CAPTCHA and then you could post. We'll have I to don't, talk to him. He's, uh, he's messaging in the, uh, on the messaging app. Oh, right? the messenger is shut. Yeah, dude. Right. I mean, here's the, like. Or no, I, he's, I, telling, he's telling us live right now in our chat room. So that's what he was saying. So we have to check on him and see what happened. Yeah, I think that they are letting it get posted to the news feed. 
but it's just it's incredible man i mean we 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 need something more open it because it's not just us like thousands of pages are getting deleted from facebook that are like legitimate pages so you know it's affecting us they actually didn't delete our page which is interesting <laughs> um we have like a quarter million followers they didn't delete our page but they're blocking us but like legitimate alternative media on the left and the right this is not like a political thing like there's they're basically going after everybody um i got banned from facebook for six months once just because of like a an algorithm that picked up some mistake. So, you know, machines are ruling that world and th th that's not really a world I want to live in. And uh, one last question we just came in, another one of our moderators, Antonio, uh, said, do you guys have a lot of bots like Steam it? <laughs> uh, we have some, I'm not going to lie, but we're, you know, th that's actually a big priority for us uh, dealing with that. I mean, every social network deals with, deals with fake accounts. It's, uh, it's a very difficult situation because a lot of the captchas that like, for instance, reCAPTCHA, which is Google's captcha, we took that out because that's Google surveillance. That means everybody who's coming in the site has to go through a Google button, which we didn't want to do. And so we took it out, but that opens it up more to bots. And uh, we're yeah. bringing in a data scientist next month full time to help develop some machine learning and stuff to, to try to track this stuff a little bit better but you know it, it it's it's not that bad they, they there's a couple though there we go again uh more than anything we appreciate the honesty uh folks we actually talked about this this week when it comes to ceos and not seeing them at conference and not being able to get a hold of them and talk to them uh this is what we like this is why it's important because uh there's ever any issues i mean he's right here with the community he's being upfront and honest with you uh so we definitely appreciate your time and you being here and of course we hope to have you back yeah, thanks for having me. Find, find me at uh, minds.com slash Ottman and anything, you know, if you guys figure, find something that's, you know, good or bad, hit me up. I'll, I'll come back on. Yeah. For sure. I would say don't uh, go don't go anywhere. We're going to have you before we close out again, folks. This is Bill Ottman of minds.com. As he said, you can find him at minds.com slash Ottman or on Twitter at minds. Uh, am I correct? At M-I-D-I-M-I-N-D-S. I can't spell today. Uh, but again, check out the platform. Uh, it's free. It looks like you get a chance to earn some money with uh, producing content. And again, uh, while it's not fully decentralized, he's definitely working on it. It's a lot further than some of the competitors. We talk about the Facebook, the YouTube's, uh, and you can do a lot on there. Just from mm -hmm. playing around, uh, you can put your podcast on there. You can put videos on there, put blogs on there. So again, we'll be playing with it again this weekend. And uh, Bill, thanks again for being here. We truly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. That was fun. All right. Yeah, you all have a great one, Warriors. Have a happy Friday, and we will see you all next week with some more cryptocurrency and Bitcoin news. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Cheers.